Hey guys, welcome back to the Spruce and Linen channel. I'm Janelle and today I'm gonna to show you a super easy way to display your weaving on a wood canvas. So let's get started. Hey, yeah, yeah, you right there. Um, Do you wanna learn how to make this adorable woven pouch? Head over to spruceandlinen.com to check out our all new e-class. There's also a link in the description box below. Before I show you how to put this all together, I'm gonna quickly go through the things that I'm using. The first thing I have is a wood canvas. I got this one from Michaels. I'll put links in the description box below for the first few things that I'm gonna be mentioning here. But you should be able to get these at most craft stores or even the dollar store. Um, but I got this one and what's great about these is that you could stain it, you could paint it, and you could just really customize it however you like. The next thing I have are these miniature clothespins. I have them in a natural wood color as well as black. These are typically in the party favor aisle at Michael's and I found them in a couple of different colors and they're just they're really cute. I wanted them to be really small personally just because I don't want them to be the focal point, but you could use full-size clothespins if you prefer, or maybe you're doing this with a much larger piece. Aside from that, I have a few other tools and materials. I have some super glue, a couple of toothpicks to apply the super glue just so I can do it a little bit more carefully, a pencil, a ruler, and of course our weaving. I'm just using this little sampler piece that I made in a previous tutorial. If you wanna check that out, I will put a link right here. And a lot of you mentioned, this was just supposed to be a sampler piece, but a lot of you were like, this is actually a really cute woven wall hanging. And I'm like, it, it really is. So. I thought, why not use this for um, the example in today's video? The first thing that we're gonna do is just figure out the placement of the weaving on the wood. Of course, we wanna make sure it's centered and all of that, but I also just wanna figure out where height-wise it needs to be placed as well, considering the clips that will be going on it. This piece is super, super lightweight, so I can get away with just doing two clips. And I will be measuring this all out yet, but I just kind of want to place them on here and figure out the height. So I want the top of my clips and the bottom of my Raya loops to sort of be centered. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it as I always do. Um, but that looks really good to me there. So I'm just going to use one of the clips and just make a little line with my pencil mark where the top of that is sitting. So then I want to kind of figure out how far apart I want these clips. This one particular clip is falling apart on me. So I'm gonna take a different one. My clips are gonna be, it works out to about three and a half inches apart. And I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, maybe we'll even go, maybe we'll go four. What I really like about this way of displaying your weaving is that you could switch it out whenever you want because we're not permanently putting the weaving onto this board. We're just clipping it onto it so that you could really change it in and out as you wish. No, I'm going with three and a half, you guys. <laughs> that looks better to me and I will put this on more evenly um, when we're ready to install it. And now I'm gonna measure where that top clip was and it's almost exactly an inch down. So I'm going to just go with an inch just for an easier measurement. Next, I'm going to find the center of my board. So mine is 11 inches wide and half of that's five and a half. And then I need um, three and a half inches apart and we've got half of three and a half is one and three quarters. I'm just going really lightly so I can erase these marks later. I'm just gonna confirm that my math looks pretty good. <laughs> and now I can erase the center mark. This is really basic stuff I realize. Um, but just in case you needed it, you've got it. And then I'm marking one inch down for the top of those. Now the other thing I'm going to want to make sure of 
is that when I glue it down, it, it's gonna look pretty straight. So if you wanna get really nitpicky with this, you could get a square and do that. Um, I'm going to just, I think I'll just make another center line. So I'm just making another tick. So I can just make sure I'm lining it up center-ish. It does not have to be perfect, but it can be if you really want it to be. So next what I'm gonna do is go ahead and glue these down. If you do want to stain or paint your board, go ahead and do that before gluing down these little clips. It's just gonna be easier to not have to work around them. Now I'm gonna use toothpicks to glue these on just because I'm a little bit concerned that otherwise I'm just gonna make a mess of it. So I definitely suggest getting like a paper towel or something to put on your table because it's super glue. It does not come off anything. Ask me how I know. <laughs> My, I'm just using the regular Gorilla Glue Super Glue, but mine is kind of old, so it is a little bit more like a gel at this point. I prefer the gel, but you do you, figure out what works best for you, but I'm gonna apply it onto this little clip with the toothpick so I can just be a little bit more precise with where the glue is going because I don't want it to end up all over my board. And I would also just suggest uh, working in a well-ventilated area with this uh, super glue is potent stuff. So if you're using something like a, a full size clothes pin, you could definitely just use hot glue for this instead. I was just a little worried that the hot glue was gonna be way too difficult to get on such a small clip accurately. So carefully make sure it's pointing the right direction. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cover my pencil line slightly. Get it as straight as I can. And then I'm just gonna hold that for a few seconds. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other clip, let it dry, and then we can put our weaving on the board. Dry, baby, dry. Once your little clips are dry enough, you can clip on your weaving. So I'm just gonna, again, eyeball this to see where it's kind of centered. And of course, I should mention, if you are gonna use the really small clips, you need to make sure the very top of your weaving is fairly thin, otherwise you're not gonna get the clips on. So if you have a really chunky piece at the very top, you know, use something a little bit bigger. You can use all different kinds of clips for this. I've seen this all over Pinterest, which is why I wanted to try it. Typically done with, you know, poster prints or photos, but I just thought this would be really cool as a way to display your weaving as well. All right, so once it's clipped on there, we now have our weaving displayed on this board. And I just, again, I know this is really simple, but it's something different. And I know not everyone is into the shape of a woven wall hanging on their wall necessarily. Like it is a little bit more organic on the edges. So this is a way that you could add a weaving to say like a gallery wall, or you could make a gallery wall out of your weaving but still have these really nice crisp edges around it all without it being fully framed in, which is something we will talk about another day. Let me know in the comments below if you like this way of displaying your weaving, are you going to try it? Another note I wanted to say is like, if you had a really big weaving and wanted to do this, you could cut your own board or just pick one up from the hardware store and put the bigger, chunkier clips on here. And I just think it's something new and different. If you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.